Now, the idea of becoming an artist didn't really come until much, much later. No one in my family uh, was not, they were all interested in the arts, but there were, there were no artists. Yeah. Yeah. So some, being an artist was something you did as a sort of betterment, you know, mm -hmm. part of your betterment. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but the idea of being an artist was still very abstract to them. My mother said the only artists she'd ever heard of were dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and she meant Picasso, you know. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so the the reality of being an artist wasn't there, but she sent me to after school classes at the Met. Uh, when I was in high school, I went to pottery classes when I was young. So arts education was always part of my upbringing. Mm -hmm. And then long after college, I decided at a certain point that I was an artist. Somehow I flipped into this identity that wasn't there. I wanted to be an architect when I was going to college mm -hmm. and realized that my brain wasn't wired for that. But my brain was wired for making paintings. Mm -hmm. And that seemed easy to me and interesting to me. And so I just pursued it after school. Uh, after I graduated college, moved back to New York, lived in an apartment in Brooklyn, mm. and was painting in my bedroom. <clears throat> and kept doing that for years and years, and then finally, at certain points, started showing work. For me, when I walk through the show, I do have a sense of possibilities. Mm. I have a sense of accomplishment. There are certain bodies of work that I feel very proud of, mm. of but I also have the sense of trajectories not taken, ideas still to be explored. So it's, it's a good way to clear the deck, in yes. a way. To just say, this is what I've done to this point, but there's a lot more to come. The abstract work I was doing hadn't really, didn't really have content. Mm -hmm. It was formal, uh, and formalism is, it can be content, but there, was, there were other things I wanted to say, and the language of a sort of classic abstraction from the 50s didn't really fit the realities that I was living and couldn't hold the content that I was interested in. Mm -hmm. And so in some ways, in a very literal way, I decided that text could hold that content. You know? mm -hmm. And so the paintings became about the essays that I was reading with the Zora Neale Hurston or Baldwin or poems by Walt Whitman or Jean Genet's uh, essays or uh, uh, and, uh, as a way to sort of bring these ideas into the work. Actually the first drawings I did with text in them were I think from 1985. Mm -hmm. Very very abstract grounds, uh, pinks and whites and blues and I was looking at uh, Pollock and Franz Klein. Mm -hmm. But written into them are uh, little snippets of text from porn magazines. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, <laughs> that was an aha moment for me. <laughs> Where the kind of uh, sensuality of the paint was mm. mirrored in the text from these porn magazines. And it was the first time I think I realized that those two things could go together.